Should is we it do now? it? Are we doing it? Oh God, I don't know. I'm scared. Ah! Is it now? All right, I'm gonna jump. <laughs> hey everybody, and everybody, welcome to a comedy advice podcast. My name is Stefan Satani, and I'm your host. Joining me today is a very special guest. He's a comedian, podcaster of the One Two Three Jokes podcast, and a special new podcast that we're gonna talk about. Everybody, welcome Ricardo Leon. Now. Now are we starting now? <laughs> now, 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 that was just a warm up, actually. Oh, that I was just scared. the warm up. Okay, okay, yeah. good, good, good. I'm gonna try my. <clears throat> I like that you saved the energy for the actual take, as opposed to the last one, which was real flat. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hello, everybody, and welcome to a comedy advice podcast. I don't know what voice <laughs> that is, but anyway, know, but you have to have your hair slicked back to do it. Yes. Hello, I feel like Tom Cruise in The Last Samurai now. Except <laughs> I'm alive. But anyway, Ricardo, <laughs> well, well, welcome. How you doing today? I'm all right. I'm all right. Just uh, trying to wrap up some stuff for work. So I'm going to be doing two things at once right now, actually. So I'll be <laughs> podcasting perfect. with you and working on some stuff for work. That's beautiful. Don't worry, it happens all the time. You're not the first guest to be multitasking, so that's fine. I do a lot of the talking, I'll guide us. But anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit about you. First, I just had Bob on, and he was telling me about one, two, three jokes, and you guys are doing it online. Zoom, mm -hmm. you guys have been having some great guests. How has that mm. been going? I want to get your side of the story because I know that. You know, in today's world, there could be <laughs> fake news and he could be giving me alternative facts. Sure, so I want to know sure. what's what's the real deal? Well, I am nothing but disappointed within every guest that we have. <laughs> now that I've seen the kind of guests that you get, Stefan, I am so jealous. I am so incredibly jealous on the kinds of guests that you have been getting. Oh, well, thank you. I can't tell if that's sarcasm or it's not sarcasm. No, but but either way, thank you. And stay tuned. I've got some very special ones here. Oh my know. gosh, Eddie Murphy! Oh yes, yeah. No, 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 definitely not. Definitely not. Not so yet. What's your secret? How do you? What do you do? What do you do? That's like, got what's the special stuff? Satani uh, uh, method. Satan, Satani sauce. Yeah. How Satani the secret sauce. ingredients in this in mm -hmm. these uh, creative juices. Well, mm -hmm. this is what I do. I go in real close. I put mm -hmm. my fingers on the keyboard, and mm. then I say. Hello, Mr. Comedian. Would you like to be on my podcast? And then they will say yes, they will say no, or they will not respond and I will email them three more times. Mm. And that's basically it. I will, it's just asking. That's all I do. And, and numbers, lots of numbers, because I ask a lot of people. And so, mm -hmm. and you know what? The no's sting. They sting because I'll, I'll ask, I think I asked uh, Burt Kreischer. And so I, mm -hmm. I got in touch with his managers and I was like, hey guys, happy Friday to both of you. How's it going? I would love to have Burt Kreischer on my podcast. Here are some of his friends that have showed up and they're like, thank you for reaching out. No. And so that was a little tough. Burt's out buying a t-shirt. So we, we don't have time for, for that. Yeah, exactly. Right? Doesn't he take his shirt off all the time? <laughs> yes, his shirt is off all. The, I think he's trying to get his pants off too in his next special. He's just mm. trying to slowly <laughs> go back to how he was at birth. Right, right. But um, he's workshop that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Going to some open mics, testing out that material. Same jokes, just no pants. So, <laughs> see how the audience likes it. But anyway, so no I like this I, this idea, this method. Uh, the only thing I was missing was fingers. I wasn't doing that. Oh, got it, got it. Okay, were you just slapping your dick on the keyboard hoping for magic to happen? Well, I know the magic's going to happen. That's why I slapped my dick on the keyboard. <laughs> just, it's just the wrong kind of magic. A You're plus right. B equals QWERTY. Equals QWERTY. Oh, we all... You, everybody needs to QWERTY once in a while. So <laughs> that's important. But um, yeah, you know what? Get, you guys have been, you had Krista K on, you had Jonathan Gregory, who is a hoot. You've had mm -hmm. some others that I've listened to. Yeah, um, we poached most of your guests. <laughs> Feel free, man. They're not mine. They're just guests. You could, <laughs> I, I have not branded, I branded one of them, but other than that, mm -hmm. none others. Mm -hmm. So it's, okay. um, 
Yeah, they're all fair game. But anyway, glad I'm glad to see because I look up to you guys. I was on your guys' podcast. I told a couple jokes. I did not win the competition. God damn it! But uh, it was a good time. So Just gotta I grease re- that monkey. I gotta gre- I gotta get in qwerty mode. Just mm-hmm. get in qwerty. <laughs> but I I loved the show and I love listening to it. It's one of the podcasts that I actually listen to. Being a podcaster, I'm not listening to a ton besides ones that I'm doing research on for guests that are coming on. Mm-hmm. But y'all you. are good. So yeah. I, I really I really enjoy. Yeah, and, I and feel. You know Go ahead. Uh, I'm really happy with this little community right now because it hasn't always been you know the local podcasting community uh you know i haven't been uh, been that interested in what other people were producing but now i've got a lot of people who are making really great things and it's it's really cool to kind of have that synergy going with people who actually respect their work and listen to oh oh man that is really really nice to hear so now now that we've both come from sucking each other's dicks why don't we get into <laughs> all i sell but yeah this oh god again jesus well okay well i was i was okay um but i was gonna say oh your new podcast your new yes. podcast yes so let, let me keep stroking here so you, you okay you're not just gonna have one podcast you're going on into another and you're diving into the yes. realm of yes. X's, and I had the pleasure yeah. of being on that podcast as well. But why mm-hmm. don't you tell our audience a little bit about your new podcast? You mean let's talk about X? Let's talk about X. Oh, what a beautiful name! <laughs> Gosh, so crafty. Well, that, that is a podcast where I talk to people about their the big ones, you know, the their X's that kind of were have some significant, or even if it's just a funny story. Uh, some people have come on and told about multiple X's that they've had. Um, Wow, Brad well, yeah, I mean, had just... multiple girlfriends. That's great. <laughs> well, no, you know, they, they, they didn't have that really big special one, but they, they kind of put the contextualized it within the whole like realm of their, their dating life. Um, oh, like stitched a very large X yes. quilt. A mosaic okay. of X's. Oh, okay. I love that. Um, All right. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's been really fun, really, really cool to, to hear these stories, and people have been pretty open. Uh, my cast member, Robert, not so open. It was kind of a lame duck <laughs> episode, but through the magic of editing, I will make it into something that will be listenable for about 10 minutes. I have salvaged several episodes oh, thanks yeah. to editing. Thanks to editing, yes, because there have just been moments where either guests or i mean the first couple episodes that i ever did they're, mm-hmm. they're not they're not even available anymore episodes one oh, through really? five we just start at six yes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. one through five were not good but i've been able to edit a lot of them and i had to edit a lot more earlier on but now mm-hmm. not so much unless a guest is just totally multitasking and doing something right 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 at the same time slapping their dick on the keyboard yeah exactly going qwerty well, on me yeah. So, you know, the reason why I, my first season of let's talk about X is going to be at least six episodes uh, is because I saw some statistics somewhere and I don't remember where it was. And, you know, even though I went to grad school to kind of study this, I cannot remember that source, but they said that most podcasts don't get past six episodes. So I've helped other people develop podcasts and that is always our goal to have one season of at least six episodes before you quit and give up. So for you start at six, you actually started the podcast when it was starting, when it, when it became an actual podcast. So don't, don't, don't fault yourself too much for, for starting at six and going forward. Oh, that's interesting. I, yeah, I did see that statistic too. It was like, 80% 80% of podcasts don't get past episode six and then 90% of podcasts should stop at episode six. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a big thing, but no, that is cool. I'm glad that you're, you're inching towards that six mark. And uh, mm-hmm. it's a good premise too, because I feel like X's are things that should be talked about. Um, and, and I think it's, it's like this wound that everybody just tries to hide. And I had a, I had a guest on before and he was talking about how he makes a lot of material with him and his wife or about him and his wife and they get into Mm -hmm. fights and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And it's things where when I was thinking about it, as we were talking, 
I was thinking and I watched his material and I was like, I don't like to talk about this, not even with my wife. As soon as we end a fight, I'm like, let's never talk about this again. Right. And so I try and bury that body and then go on with my life. But mm -hmm. I feel like that raw emotion from those experiences, you can use that and you can form it and mold it into comedy. You can mold it into a good podcast that's captivating because these are, it's something that you can listen to anybody's story about mm -hmm. an ex and you can kind of relate unless you're oh, a yeah. nerd. If you're a nerd, <laughs> then no, you can't. But other than it's that- It's vicarious can, listening. Yeah, there you go. You could pretend like that's your ex and you're mm -hmm. like, oh, so that's what it feels like. So mm -hmm. I, I do feel like it's a good idea and I can't wait to listen, subscribe, leave a review everywhere it's found. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's cool. And uh, if it's out by the time, maybe we can time this so that by the time that this episode releases, I can put a link in the show notes or not. Okay. I, can, I can do this today. I can hey, do it whenever you Hey, that could be a goal. Want. That could be a goal for me. There you go. I'll set a date and then we'll, all right, we'll talk about it offline. But anyway, huh. Whew. well, this has been a great chat. Ricardo, anything all else right. you want to talk about before we get oh, into this? Great. Oh, we're getting into, I thought we did it, but okay. Oh no, we're not done. We are not <laughs> done. That was just a little foreplay before we get into the QWERTY part of the uh, podcast. Okay. So we're going to do some self-help. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Awesome. We're going to get into an inspirational quote to be able to help us answer some questions. Thanks. You know how this go. I don't know why you thought this was the, Oh, okay. no, I'm just kidding. I know. I figured you were right. just kidding. Um, so do you have any inspirational quotes beyond the ones that you said oh, last time? I forgot about that. Uh, <laughs> inspirational quote. Oh, 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 oh. Today I was talking with my therapist and my therapist said that Buddha said, uh, that Mabel okay. said, no, um, <laughs> so this is secondhand news. Um, Buddha said that pain is inevitable or pain, pain is to be expected, but suffering is a choice. You know, I, I, to me, I think he was giving me a different meaning than I took from it. But my meaning, my, the, the meaning that I took from it is that like, yeah, things are gonna suck, but it's up to you how you experience that. You know, you can make lemons out of lemonade or you can just like die in the pit, bleach bones kind of. Yeah, that's, that's very, I'm going to, is there something in the background, maybe a, a very heavy, rusty fan it's or a, shower. a robot vacuum? No, oh, my son's taking a shower. Is it? Would you tell him to take a bath so that we can <laughs> take a bath? <laughs> is it too, is it too loud? It's loud, but it's, I think I might, hold on. If it's we, like consistent. Let me see. It's okay. Cause you know what? If we just don't talk for five seconds, I think I can edit it out and post. Okay. Wait, Is it still going? Might be finishing. Oh, there. Okay. Sometimes it just makes, I'm going to use this box from the Ian Malcolm action figure. Jurassic Park. Okay. Let's see if this helps at all. Oh, nice. Are you not going to use the video, right? I am going to use the video. Oh, you use the video now? I am going to use the video, yeah. All right. Let's see. Especially since you've got such a cool background. Did do anything? No, it did nothing. But it's okay, because I got the five seconds, so I'll, I think okay. I'll be able to edit it out in post. Anyway, back to, you know what? You know what? I'm not going to choose to suffer, and our listeners are not going to choose to suffer about it either. Because you know what, listeners? Oh, wah, wah, there's a shower going on in the background? What? Oh, on the free content that you're listening to? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, this hilarious guest that I provided for you, and me, funny old Steph, just giving you some jokety jokes, and you guys are complaining about the shower. You know what? It's his son. He needs to be clean. Hygiene. Go ahead, Ricardo. It's gone. Oh, it's gone. Thank fucking Christ. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um, so <laughs> Buddha, back to the quote. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Buddha. So that was a great quote. We're going to go on to the quote that I have. This is actually by a robot. It's called Inspire Robot. And what it does is it uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to man and just mesh them together for a delicious quote. So <clears throat> 
Today's quote from Inspire Bot is only two words. Mm -hmm. And I'll try and say it like Inspire Bot. <clears throat> Love fats. Mm -hmm. Love fats. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to be able to be extracted from that. I think mm -hmm. first off, I think it may be a really weird way to say body positivity. Yeah. I think it's like a chubby chaser, like, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, slogan. Love, love fats. Love fats. Fats uh, maybe, deserve love too. That's <laughs> fats. What? Well, that's like, uh, I feel weird just saying that. Oh yeah. Fats. Uh, but I was thinking more like triglycerides or trans mm. fats, monounsaturated, uh, polyunsaturated fats. Those mm -hmm. might be the things that Inspired Bots is talking about because mm -hmm. there was a stigma about it in the 90s where everything was mm -hmm. like, oh, mm -hmm. you got to be low fat or else you're going to, you know, die unhealthy. And now mm -hmm. research is saying, wrong, that's wrong. <laughs> and the fats are actually okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's the sugars and processed mm -hmm. meats. And I think bananas are bad. Saw a documentary mm -hmm. saying that bananas... Every time you eat a banana, you're eating pure violence because of the drug cartels. Oh, right. Politically. After the bananas. Bad. So, I mean, there's really, and avocados too. I mean, there are, there are funded militia to protect avocados and avocado farmers in Mexico. Mm -hmm. So you got to love what else is left. I don't know what else is left. Is, is beef mm -hmm. okay? No, because there are a lot of vegans out there saying beef is horrible yeah yeah it's murder uh well you know yes. for thanksgiving i usually make a banana avocado salad it's oh beef. my god how many so, people died from that well, that is the most makes it more delicious that's the most violent <laughs> violent dish i've ever heard of Amazing. <laughs> i get my turkeys through sex trafficking actually <laughs> oh, the turkeys love... actually traffic so mm -hmm. that's, um, <laughs> that's how it works yeah <laughs> beautiful okay well good i feel like we have nailed that quote so we're gonna go into some questions we've got mm -hmm. this first one it's from reddit it's by, found by our fan rebecca Y. it mm -hmm. says i swear a lot and need to stop any advice i swear an unhealthy amount in real life and i need to stop i annoy a lot of people with my constant swearing it's not funny it's just annoying for everybody i need some advice on how to stop and that's by sincerely swearing myself out. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, yeah. Carter, do you have a problem swearing? Do you swear excessively? I don't really fucking swear all that fucking much, but get me in a cunty mood and I might swear the fuck out. <laughs> I, I want to point out, Rebecca, you refrain from swearing in this entire message. I think you have the power within you to not swear. Right? I think the power is there. You know, it, it is a good point. I noticed that as well, where there was no swearing in the message. The message was written. Writing takes a little bit more time to process and, and mm. it can be thought out. So maybe, mm. Rebecca, you should get the Stephen Hawking Matic or whatever that machine is <laughs> that Stephen Hawking used and just type out what you want to say. That way there will be no cursing necessary and you can actually right. communicate in a healthy way to your friends. First, get Stephen Hawking disease, and then <laughs> get the wheelchair with the voice thing. Is that what it's called? It's called Stephen Hawking disease. SHD for short. <laughs> perfect. So, uh, oh, and, okay. Go ahead. I forgot what I was going to say. I'm so, this is a terrible <laughs> podcast guest thing to do. Oh, well... I was thinking, actually, you're saying that she wrote this down and that gave her some more time to process what she was saying. The Barack Obama kind of hesitation thing. You know what I mean? That uh, where he's thinking about what he's going to say. Mm. He's a thinker. He's a smart guy, but he knows that he has to use the right words. That's true. So vocal fry yourself. I <laughs> uh, like, uh, here we go. Yeah. Uh, uh, here we go. That's pretty good. Rebecca? 
I do like that. That is pretty good because that way, I mean, you might come across as aggravating if you don't have a nice, deep Barack Obama voice. If you're like, uh, hey guys, <laughs> we should go to the uh, store. Uh. So that might come across as very annoying or more annoying than usual. But if you've got a nice voice, I think you could get away with it. So that's a great suggestion. Well, I Rebecca, was... include the little bass in there. If you can't get to Barack Obama, maybe like a Bugs Bunny, like, hey, what's up, doc? Oh, or you could put some sort of interlocutor that instead of fuck, you could say, um, I think on the good place, they say fork. So you mm. can find another interlocutor that's mm. not an expletive. So you could be like, what the fork is going on here? And it'll sound mm. really cute and people will get the message. They'll have the word in their head because you've given it to them, but you won't say it. So no culpability is on your part. Well, I think the act, the, because of the consistency of the swearing is the issue that's annoying. So, mm. yeah, maybe there's nothing you can do, Rebecca, because any other option that you have would just be annoying. That's you're right. an annoying person, Rebecca. Yeah, you're, you are very annoying. Thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. for Thanks for listening. But, wait, wait. There's one more beacon. One more beacon of hope for this person. Oh. I just had an idea. Maybe just maybe it's going to be the response that saves me but after all no uh, sorry i got caught up in the song <laughs> that's what you need a wonder wall <laughs> sing sing everything oh that would be no uh, that would be uh, because then you might just get still put fucking in there so i don't know but mm. but this is what i was gonna say i saw a movie like 15 years ago mm. called brewster's millions when <laughs> yeah. the guy had to, to get his inheritance of $300 million, he had to spend $30 million in 30 days. So he would be sick of spending money. So what you need to do is you need to crank that lever. So you need to dial it to 11. So you need to be swearing all the time. Like, mm -hmm. fuck yeah, mom, I want some fucking lasagna. Or like, fuck dad, we don't want to watch fucking Fox News. So you really just detoxify yourself of these expletives. So then by the end, you'll be nice and clean. And you'll be so sick of using those words that you'll be like, well, you know what, I'm not going to use them again. And then you'll be clean, cured. Mm. I, I think that's a really good idea. So you could start like binging on movies like uh, The Departed and and what like Pulp Fiction, the the dude, uh, the Big Lebowski, those That's kinds right. of movies that are known for having various you know a lot of swears in them, and you can just start practicing that way. Oh, that's a good idea. Like pretty much every Quentin Tarantino movie. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. could just put those movies on on loop. If you listen to podcasts, mm -hmm. don't just turn the audio files <laughs> of those movies on. So you're just hearing fuck, 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 all the time. Yeah. And when we uh, were kids, our stereo system was hooked to the TV, you know, for like surround sound kind of thing. And it would also record the radio. So initially, essentially you could record what was coming out of the TV and I'd record movies and listen to the movies as I went to sleep. It's early podcasts. Oh my God. You were a pioneer of mm -hmm, your day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also a pirate. I pirated. I stole those. Pirating were, is not a victimless crime. Pirate, pirateer. Pirate. Yes, you were. A pirate yeah. yeah. That's, that is, by the way, this is recorded. This will be released as evidence, Ricardo. So. All right. You're, Sorry, Will Smith and Tommy Lee crimes. Jones. I'm glad pockets. that you I'm glad that you apologized to both of those two because that's mm -hmm. who I was thinking was hurt the most mm -hmm. of all of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um so that's good. Especially but the thing about Tommy my Lee Jones is alive? Oh yeah. Yeah. I didn't read the paper this morning. I'm pretty sure he's alive. I feel like all of, <laughs> I feel like all of those articles at the end of this gossip magazine or wherever where they have this is what blah, blah, blah looks like now. I feel like if I saw that for Tommy Lee Jones, he would just be wrinkles. It would just be. He's basically like looked the same since the 1980s. Just that same, like, he's, 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 a, he's got an a unconventionally handsome guy. Unconventionally is a nice word. I yeah. think that 
if so ricardo if you had a choice of looking mm-hmm. super old at 20 mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. not aging at all until like 80 mm. or you were gonna look really nice and young until about 40 and then you just go way downhill mm. who's all you can care wrinkle I think, city i think i'm already on that track but you know what the difference is between me and people who just like look terrible i make this look good men in black i always i always want to say that to my wife i don't know why but it pops <laughs> into my head but then i'm like wait then i'm saying that she looks like shit so then I, i've never i've not been able to say it Maybe it could be with something like a jock strap or or something, you know, uh, 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 what do they call those, like portable urinals, something like that. I've tried, but she looks way better with a jock strap mm. and she looks way better with the urinals. So mm. it's just, it's tough, man. It's really tough. Okay. You should but buy anyway, her that's... uglier versions of those things. And, and you have the nice you... one. Okay. And then you can say, you know what the difference is between you and me? I make this look good, even though probably it's making you look good. That's the thing about women. You have to manipulate their minds. That's true. Oh, maybe I should just get her something really shitty. And then, (laughs) no, this is not. That's what I was saying. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Just do that. All right. So that's all getting edited out. This is no, it's staying in. This is a, a delicious episode so far. All right. We're going to move on to the last question. This is found somewhere from our fan, Nick. Thank you, Nick. It says, I think I may have finally found a sugar mama for myself. Hi, 23 male here. Recently, I ran into an older woman who was kind of adamant on paying for me and taking care of my needs. She's really pretty and everything is going great so far. I'm loving it. I'd really like to know about some do's slash don'ts. And advices are welcome, too, from anyone who's had similar run-ins. Sincerely, mm-hmm. sugar baby, yes, yes, and no-nos. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ricardo, let me ask you, have you ever mm-hmm. been in the sugar family, I guess? Have you ever been a sugar daddy or a sugar baby? I mean, I, I'm really into reciprocity. So, yeah, I mean, I've been sugared up and I, I've sprinkled the sugar myself. In different relationships or in the same yeah, relationship? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, in the same relationship. You know, it's fun. It's nice. You know, I, I usually, you know, on like a first date or something, I'll pay for things and I'll like try to pay for things as much as possible. And then it becomes like this like tension where they like try to like throw their card down before I can. And it's fun. I mean... You know, I a, thought you were going to say on the first date, I like to let them pay and then I'll reciprocate <laughs> if I like them. But I, that's good. That's very chivalrous. I think that is. Yeah, that's true. Um, I've never been a sugar baby. Mm-hmm. I did one time accidentally go on a date with what I think would have been a sugar daddy. Mm. But that's a story for another time. For this time. I feel like do do's and don't don'ts. What did they call it? Oh, do's and don'ts. Sorry, I don't know why I called it. Do-do's. Yes, yes, and no no's. Yes, 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 and no no's. I feel like a yes, yes would be accept the money. No no's would. I don't know what would make them angry. I don't, I don't know. Like, what what is he asking? Like, what like that will so not to offend them or like how to keep this thing going. I think he wants to keep this gravy train running. Right. So right. he wants to make sure that all the oil is fresh. He wants to make sure that there are no gears that will be grinding. <laughs> could, could take this thing to a halt. So I don't know. I feel like as long as she's into you, I mean, just try to be sexy, bro. Just <laughs> keep yourself fit and trim. Find out what she likes about you. Ask her. Communicate. Be like, what mm-hmm. do you like about me? And then really, really capitalize on all of that. If she likes your great bod, then mm-hmm. keep having a great bod. If she likes your personality, then just really amplify that personality. If she likes your feet, don't get a manicure. Keep it the same. <laughs> keep it don't disgusting. 
Keep she them loves gross. Disgusting feet. Yeah, if she likes them danky uh, toe hangnails, keep them danky. All right, Nick. L- l- let me break something down for you, young guy. But why do you have to label it? Why does she, she have to be a sugar mama and you have to be a sugar baby or whatever? Like, why why can't it just be how your relationship functions? Like, what what you immediately you're already looking to take advantage of this woman, you know, instead of just accepting her kindness. So yep. I think you need to like re-examine what it is you're getting out of this relationship. You, you know, know what? It sounds like you're weighing heavily. I mean, you did she she was pretty, you know, but but you're really focusing on this, you know, taking care of my needs. Yeah, I think you're right. And you know what? I don't mean to shit on poor uh sugar baby, but I feel like, dude, you're 23 years old. You're excited that you're with an older woman and she's paying for all your stuff. And you're writing about it on Reddit. You've probably told all your friends. Mm-hmm. You are a little attention skank. And mm-hmm. I feel like you are so proud of this that you need to sit in the humble chair for like five minutes and be like, well, whoa, whoa, whoa. What is my impact on the world? What is my impact on this woman? Is, is she doing okay? Like, why mm-hmm. is she paying for a little sugar baby? Should I maybe attend to her needs? Because this experience is about you and her. And if you're just trying to ask, I don't know where you're at, Quora, Reddit, your mom's house. But if you're asking all these people, like, oh, how can I keep this thing going? Because I really like being a sugar baby. Mm-hmm. You're just being a little baby. You're just being a regular baby, a non-diabetic baby. Just you a just need- regular baby. Just a fucking toddler. <laughs> wah, wah. And so <laughs> you need to grow the fuck up, take off your diapers, your sugar diapers, and you need to <laughs> try and make this a relationship. And that, that's what's truly going to make you happy. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Or, or you go through that examination process and you realize that, no, this is not going to make me happy. Like, you know, like either you're doing something wrong or you're doing something right. Like make up your mind, man. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. It, 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 maybe it's to- maybe you're insecure about liking an older woman. Don't don't feel insecure about that. Like love who you love. It's fine. You know, maybe she's taking advantage of you. You know, maybe she, you'll be on the next bus out of here once you turn 24. That's right. That's right. Maybe she'll get another sugar baby and mm-hmm. he'll be able to suckle on that money teeth so you know what i mean just like ricardo said complete 180 on everything that i said before you know maybe this should just be maybe you should just enjoy it just keep going with the flow just keep raking in that cash for all her needs give her a wish list and then just ride that wave do what you want bro do what you want who are we to tell you what you want (laughs) just do what you want it's an advice podcast, but I, I'm just saying like, like you get things from your wife that, you know, you, you, you love your wife. She's the most beautiful woman in your eyes, you know, and, and that's okay. And you deserve that. You know what I mean? And there's probably things that in your relationship that other people would be like, uh, that's not for me. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. Like Nick, you got to just like, just either be okay with it or don't be okay with it. Don't stigmatize yourself. Right, right. Because every re- relationship is unique. So mm-hmm. if you're trying to be like, oh, here are the rules of this, that. She's a woman. She is a woman with a stripe here and a polka dot there and a wrinkle here and a curve in another place. And it's all unique. It's like a mm-hmm. strand of sexy, rich DNA. And that's yours for the time <laughs> being. And you have to enjoy that and understand that those DNA sequences those they're going to be unique. So you guys might mesh really well in some areas where mm-hmm. another sugar baby and another sugar mama wouldn't. Mm-hmm. So there's no mm-hmm. guidebook. I mean, there probably is. If you look on Amazon, that might be my second answer. Just look on Amazon for a Amazon. sugar baby's guide to making money. Read a book. But, yeah. Read a book nerd. But other than that, I mean, it's going to be unique. Like Ricardo said. So you have to really just feel just wade through the grains of sugar and just stick your tongue out and see what tastes nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Anything else? If you, what, what would you like, Ricardo, would you enjoy being completely pampered by a sugar mama? Yeah. I mean, like, so you, there's the give and take, right? So 
you know, she might want to pamper me and, and, and buy me all these things. But if that means that I have to like, you know, take out the trash or something, then <laughs> no, thank you. I'm an independent <laughs> Taking man. Taking out the trash. What? A, wait, no, no, no. Okay. What if I was, cause I was going to ask you, what if she paid for every need and want, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but then you had to wear a diaper at all times. It's not like <laughs> no. you, you didn't even have to show it. It's not like on the outside, like quail man, but you just <laughs> wear it on the inside and it might be a little puffy around the trouser area, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. Um, you just have to wear a diaper at all times. No. I mean, who is she? What does she look like? She is like Megan Fox. Ugh. Not right, my that cup of tea. Example. Not my cup of tea. But I think in general, no. I mean, that's that's what I'm trying to kind of like relate to this guy. You know, it's like, don't give up part of yourself. You know, if you think it's bad to be with an older woman, well, for whatever reason, then don't. You know, if you think it's bad to like be in this kind of, you know, relationship where the recipro- reciprocity isn't direct be linked then don't do it like just yeah i wouldn't wear a diaper no okay that's what i really wanted to know i think mm-hmm. i would if if my wife let's say it's my wife and in this scenario and she mm-hmm. pays for everything she's mm-hmm. got enough money to pay for it all but i have to wear a diaper i think i'd do it bro i think i'd do it beaches might be a little awkward but mm-hmm. i don't know man you get everything you want. I could get a bigger house. I could get any car I wanted. I could be riding a Ferrari. I'd have to wear, I'd, I'd be deep. I would be the only one that knew that I was wearing a diaper in my Ferrari. Yeah, but you'd lose the empowerment of being an adult man who doesn't wear diapers, who can take care of business. And, you know, you could actually like have the money to, to take his wife on a vacation or a nice dinner or something. You don't want to give that up to you. But bro, Ferrari. But bro, Ferrari. But bro, Ferrari. Ferrari, bro. Ferrari, bro. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now we have reached the end of the podcast and it's time to say adieu. But before we say adieu, I'd like to have a huge, huge round of applause and a thank you to Ricardo Leon for joining me and helping me give advice. It's been an My awesome pleasure. Time my pleasure we've had some laughs we've had some Mm. tears we've had some Mm. diapers but Mm. overall it was an amazing time and i wanted to ask where can people find you what have you got going on what would you like to plug well you can find me on instagram rickstar underscore i'm uh, i need to check it again to make sure because when i i changed it and then i changed it back and then i couldn't get the under uh, without the underscore anymore i'm gonna try to get that back see if i can do that um Otherwise, I'm on One, Two, Three Jokes, the competitive comedy podcast where we take three stories from the news, write three jokes about each story, and see who has written the funniest joke. Uh, and coming soon, Let's Talk About X will be a podcast that you can find anywhere that you, uh, you find podcasts. Let me just take a second and take the compliment shower and then you know, direct the nozzle in your direction because I think you did a really good job. I remember last time. You guys were talking about, oh, it's really hard to summarize our podcast. And you just did it beautifully. You did it in one breath. You said what your what one, two, three jokes is about and your new podcast. Let's talk about X. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Bravo. You know, some people wear diapers. Some people shit their pants. Another Buddha quote? <laughs> only Another two Buddha? choices. You only got those two choices. Some people shit their pants, and uh, but not everyone has to suffer. Wait, why would your wife make you wear a diaper? What would be the psychological motivations for doing that? I don't know. I just imagine that that was the weirdest thing that someone would make me do. Mm, mm. Okay. Well, or you like, know what, Stefan, you don't need to be... You have swarthy, good looks, Italian good looks. You do look like Tom Cruise from Samurai... The last samurai. <laughs> I do see that. You were absolutely right. Don't let someone make you wear a diaper. You know what? I'm taking it off. That's enough, babe. Okay. <laughs> I'm not really taking it off, though. She's going to kill me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we're already Ricard- sitting down. So, yeah, I know. It's fine. I already, I also did soil myself. So it is practical beyond anything. Mm-hmm. So you will be taking it off. 
I will. I, I, well, that's the rules. I got to just like taper the front part and then just scrape off the bottom part. Uh, Cause that was going to, that was going to be my next question. It's like, who, who takes it off? That's probably a factor in the decision-making process as well. That is a good point. I mean, also like, would you use the diaper if you had to wear a diaper all the time? Would you use the bathroom? Like, would you never even go in there? Yeah. Would, would you, what do I you mean, do? Where, where do you put the diapers? Around the your diapers. groin area. No, no, no. Where would you do with them after you soiled them? I don't know. I'd probably have a diaper genie. Diaper genie? <laughs> <laughs> a six foot tall diaper genie? <laughs> oh my God. Or I just imagine those old school diapers that you actually don't throw Pins. away and you have a clothesline and fix. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, but mm-hmm. anyway. All right. Well, that's for another time on our podcast, Diaper Talk. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ricardo, it's been an absolute pleasure having you. Listen. Oh, I forgot my other podcast. It's it's called uh, What Was Stefan Talking About When He Said That He Went On A Date With A Sugar Daddy? <laughs> that's right. That will be for another time because it's actually a pretty great story. And uh, I'm glad that I escaped with my life. But... <laughs> That's for another time. We will talk about that. But until next time, bye-bye. Bye. Uh, Love fats. Love fats, that's right. And then scene. Good job, buddy. Thanks, man. That was a fun time. It's always fun, dude. It is. It is. Always fun. How does it feel one person versus three other people? two other people um i mean you know i I enjoy talking to you in general um oh you know and eric is eric is a funny guy too he brings something to it as well but i don't you know it's not necessary for it to be a a group thing i know that there's there's a little more features when he's on because it's you know kind of balancing out all of that but when it's just you you're it's just like you know a direct interview right 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 yeah I, cause I'm starting to go more off into like just me. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, um, and so that the reason, yeah, the reason I was asking is I've started to go off just me cause I'm basically doing all the work, mm-hmm. but also these bigger guests, the scheduling is pretty impossible to do with yeah. people that have a nine to five. Yeah. And so um, yeah, I, I think that's a good strategy. And then ultimately, you know, it doesn't, you know, that th- to maintain the consistency that that's just what the show becomes. Yeah. Yeah. So I I still want to have like, I still want to have him on and I've been mm-hmm. having Cam, Cam Sneed, who's another guy. Mm-hmm. He, if you guys are looking for guests, he's a good one. Actually. Yeah. The name sounds familiar, but I, I don't know. But yeah, I'll, I'll look into it. Yeah. Cam Sneed. Cam Sneed. Cam Sneed. So, um, uh, but yeah, yeah, I was just curious because I did it. I've been doing it for a, like, yeah, of all, I have, uh, on my board, all the episodes that I need to edit still. Mm-hmm. And I have done almost all of them just me. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. It's been, it's been great, man. I mean, I've learned a lot because being in that with, like with you, with Bob, it's a little more easygoing at first because mm-hmm. we know each other and blah, blah, blah. But like, if it's a bigger guest and I've never met them before, it's terrifying. And I yeah. want to do oh research on them and like yeah. figure out a little bit about them. So that's, that's, but I've gotten better at it, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, where at first I was absolutely terrified and now I'm still terrified, but I feel like I'm able to hold my own a little bit and mm-hmm. have fun. So it's good. Yeah. Nothing. No, no, I have no negative feedback about it just being you. I think it's great, but uh, you know, if you're looking per- for permission to date your sugar mama, then <laughs> I think it's fine. <laughs> I think it, you, it's good. It works this way. You know, I think it's fine. You know, there's other projects out there. Eric can join our podcast. 
Nice, nice. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't quite broke the news, but this week I'm going to talk with them a little bit because, mm-hmm. I, I mean, they they weren't on every episode anyway. But mm-hmm. I think uh, we were always. I've been trying to do like four or five episodes a week, and that's just not panning out so much oh, anymore. Yeah. And so I think one of the episodes I'm going to cut is the one with just me and Eric and and Cam. I really, I really like both of them too. I think they're super funny. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. If you do want to steal them, that's fine. <laughs> well, I mean, there's, I don't know, there's like 15 of us on our show and it's, yeah, I know it's like so difficult to like get everybody's scheduled, coordinate, everybody's schedules coordinated. And so, yeah, I mean, I don't fault you at all for that. I mean, we make it work because we're really close. Uh, <laughs> not everybody has such close friendships, but I'm just giving you, I'm giving you a hard time. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I know. <laughs> I, I wouldn't I gotta go that. okay i just wet my diaper no, but <laughs> but no no you, you, seriously it's true though i feel like i don't um you guys are really close and you guys are able to make it work and good job for you guys because it it's not easy to be able to handle it was five now four i think mm-hmm. with aaron gone but mm-hmm. all those schedules also you just got like a machine man you're just you produce so much content all the time. You're doing it all on, on your own, you know, all the editing and all that stuff. So yeah. yeah, I can't, I couldn't imagine, you know, trying to, trying to make that work. It takes, it's already taken me like what, like five months to make a podcast. So <laughs> I think that. I, yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's not easy and it takes a lot of time, but I, I do, I feel like I'm it's, it's worth it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Yeah. But, oh, we'll see, man. Anyway. Well, here's the thing. You just keep your connections, though, too. You know, every once in a while, you know, throw a little segment at the end. Hey, this is me talking with Eric about, you know, XYZ or something. Just to, just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Just to not burn that bridge completely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sure he'll be fine, too. Yeah. We'll have him so, on uh, soon. We'll have him on the beginning of November. Nice, nice. So that, what I've about me? To, what the fuck? No, you I'm were already it. on, but yeah, we'll have you back on. We love. So was so, he? So we we've traditionally done a a big Thanksgiving and Christmas show, uh huh. Most of the time, and we like to bring in the people that we really like and do. I mean, it's not going to be oh good as fun as it has been, where it's like because we've had like a Thanksgiving meal once, and we did karaoke for Christmas, and nice. Uh, I mean, obviously, who knows what's going to happen this year, but. But yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll figure out some way. I think we're going to do, I don't know. I, I wanted to do a Halloween thing, but I don't know if that's going to happen. It's going to come together. But mm-hmm. you're always on our mind. We always love collaborating with you. So, um, Aww. you know, Aww. You always so be sweet. in touch, man. Yeah, I look up to you guys and I, I love what you guys are doing. So I had a, a nice talk with bob too where he mm-hmm. and i talked a little bit he was asking about because i was telling him a little bit about where my podcast is going in the direction and he was talking mm-hmm. about the i don't know if he talked about it with you guys at all but it's like where should we be going talking about guests talking about no mm-hmm. guests and stuff mm-hmm. like that so i gave him my mm-hmm. opinion and honestly i think i think you guys i think the last couple of episodes have been guestless and they've been fantastic so he's always like he's always got his mind that there's something wrong like he's should we do it with no guests or you know or yeah he's always kind of been not as comfortable with having guests on i I love it i love chaos i love new people so for me it's different for him i think he likes it a little more um you know toned down oh like consistent and structured like he knows who to expect who to expect is coming on that they you know because he would maybe he would say oh i don't want any net guests but if you or somebody that we liked wanted to come on it would be like no problem you know i think he, I he's see. always worried that the person who's going to come on is going to kind of fall flat or something but I, I think most people you know there's an there's a saying in improv or like a mantra i don't know what you'd call it but that you're supposed to make the other person look good So that's always been the way that I approach this, you know, the show is like, it's not your job to be funny. It's our job to make you seem funny, you know, and if you're not funny, then we've messed up unless you're like really just crazy, not funny, 
you know, abrasive or rude or whatever, then that's, that's hard to deal with. But for the most part, people are very, you know, uh, generous. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with that. And that's something that I try to keep in mind is I have my guests on and it's like, it's not really about me trying to be funny. I just try to make, set them up. I'm like the mm -hmm, Scotty Pippen mm -hmm. to them being the Michael Jordan. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, so I'm the Dennis I, Rodman to our podcast. Nice. Nice. Love it. I, yeah, I'm the Scotty Pippen. I'm grossly underpaid compared to my Michael Jordans and <laughs> don't do shit about it. So it's great. But anyway, it was awesome to have you, man. I'll let you know when this episode comes out. Mm -hmm. I've got God. I've got eight episodes in line. So it may be a little while. I'm gonna great. release Bob's on Bob's on Friday or Monday, maybe. So I think about a month. But check in with me if it's been too long and you're like, mm, where the fuck is this episode? No, that sounds great because so. then it'll give me some time to get my act together and, and maybe have something to actually correspond to the plug that I, I put out there. Oh, nice. Yeah, I will reach out to you, though, to see if if it's been a while, if you uh, have a link or if your podcast is live. Although I'll probably see something on Instagram or Facebook, but just in case, I'll check in yeah, with I'll you. Drop you. I'll drop you a line when that happens. Nice. Nice. Well, man, it's always good seeing you. Hopefully we can see each other in person sometime again because I'm missing me some Rick. Send a Rick oh, yeah, we, every once in a I was going to say, like, uh, have we even met in person? <laughs> but we did. Or, or, was that earlier this year or last year? That was... Fuck. I don't know. Hold on. I, I might be able to tell you exactly when based on when the episode was out. But I think it was last year. Was it last year? We all went over to Carly's place. Eric and I did your guys' mm -hmm. podcast. Then you mm -hmm. came on. Did Back ours. when it was hyperbole. Hyperbole. So, it would, shit. When the fuck was it? One, two, three. Episode 127. It came out on March 9th, but I think it was. Oh, shit. So, maybe we saw each other this year. I think so. So long ago. All right. Well, Were we ever like, so young? God, forever young. Well, anyway. <laughs> Miss right, you, man. dude. I get back to your very clean son. And uh, yeah, hopefully. We'll talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we'll talk soon. All right. Talk to you later, man. Bye. All right. Later. Bye.